happy to share. And I have a deep curiosity of, do you have a paradisical vision of what, let's say, sexual trauma healing, but maybe trauma healing in general, could look like, perhaps with within the context of ethical non-monogamy or that practice occurring in community? Mm, God, that's a great question. It's funny, I want to ask you for your definition of paradisical. Oh. Because mm -hmm. I think I know what paradisical would mean, but I feel like I might um, not answer the question effectively without knowing fully what your definition is of that. Just, you know, in alignment with... Um, let's say like reciprocity and mutual joy and uh, respect for the earth, you know, so this sort of thing. And it doesn't have to be so high reaching, but yeah. sort of some, like, what are we growing towards would be like my question without limit for perhaps maybe some of the things that we fall into. Or also you could comment on like, what are the common pitfalls and yeah. Well, what's, what I find interesting about your question, um, and I'm feeling called to embrace her, um, I suspect, when I talk about this and I'm not jealous, I suspect that we as a race, a human race, a human society, we're moving towards um, communal love, towards your and my autonomy is recognized, acknowledged, and held with a reverence that allows us to not be owned or possessed. So that's a major theme in my book, that I believe the old system of marriage and um, partnership where we give someone else the right to own our sexuality, give someone the right to um, own our calendar or own whether or not we hug another person or look at another person, you know, desiringly. Um, and we also, in the past, have done this with children. Um, I believe that the ownership model is flawed and causing a lot of the problems, specifically the problems with divorce. You know, um, well, I got married to you, um, we were supposed to go in this direction, you evolved to want to go in the other direction, and, you know, I don't want to go there, so we have to, like, kill off the relationship, disown each other, and that comes with a lot of trauma, and um, when we've shared the most intimate of details, I mean, even as far as having a baby with another person, an ending of that possessiveness, I suggest, is where the problems are falling. So if I own my sovereignty, if you own your sovereignty, if the person I choose to spend intimate time with owns their sovereignty, when I choose to be with that person, it's a gift. When I choose to not be with that person, it doesn't take that gift away. It's just another choice that is not charged. If I choose to spend time with someone um, that is new, that's sharing of my gifts with other people instead of, you know, taking away from other people. And I think that that. That concept of possession ownership is one that needs to be talked about. I'm absolutely supportive if someone has a relationship where that works for them, that to have an ownership of each other, that's everybody's right, their autonomous, sovereign right to have. I believe that that can be done consciously and it can help people to grow. But I also believe that opening relationships up to love people how we as autonomous beings choose to love people is is also a growth edge how that relates to sexual healing is for me 
oftentimes the person we've chosen to be romantically um, married to or connected with might not be the person who can hold space for sexual healing. So that in itself can be traumatic for someone who has sexual trauma to not have anywhere to go and to be jailed in a contract that doesn't allow them to experience healing. So when someone comes to someone like myself, a tantric sex healer, sex coach, um, I'm not having sex with the person, however, I take people on sexual journeys so that they have a safe, sacred space with someone that they feel comfortable with to be courageously vulnerable, to go through the eye of the needle. That's really hard to do with your partner. So I really feel like it's really important to have have a community of sex healers to allow a person to find a sex healer that resonates with them and for that not to be a, an experience that's considered sexual. Yes, it runs sexual energy. Yes, it may um, include sexual contact with genitals and, and um, the flesh, the skin bag as I call it, um, but it doesn't mean that that person is, you know, breaking a, a vow um, to go have a sexual healing with someone, and that doesn't mean you're having intercourse. It means that you're being guided and coached in the moment of a sexual um, experience so that if there are any triggers that the healer can help remove those triggers and guide the person to their highest um, their highest expression of healing in that moment and for me that requires a community that embraces that kind of healing um, you're not going to get that from a pill you're not going to get that from um, oftentimes your lover because it's really hard for a lover to hold that space unless they are a trained sex healer and even then the healer might be triggered by some of the things that the person who's needing healing um, needs to have space to clear through and from my experience it's very rare to find someone who's your lover and also a sex healer who can hold space when you're as a, the individual who's you know releasing the trauma um, say a woman releasing trauma with men and having your your male lover try to hold that space it might be easier for a female sex healer to hold that space for a woman um, and and release it completely how did I do to answer your question? That was great. There are more questions that have come out of what I've said. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this leads me to think, you know, you say like a community mm -hmm. of um, sexual healers. That kind of reminds me of like temple times. So temple. I don't, I'm wondering if you're uh, <laughs> agitating for bringing back the temple. Um, for here at Soul Play, is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, or just like oh, in yeah. general, oh, you yeah. know? Absolutely. I think so. Um, ancient civilizations always had temples with sex healers and priestesses, priests, high priestesses, high priests who would um, absolve the people who came through of anything that is disturbing their field, their body, their spirit. I think it's time to have those temples brought back 
I think festivals are kind of the most modern version of the sexual healing temples and I've done what I can by creating during the pandemic a, a mystery school called the Goddess Arts and Intimacy Academy. I think that there needs to be more initiation schools when all of us as humans who are curious about sexual healing can go through our own practice of healing purifying our experience of being human because we're really sexual pleasure beings so if we can actually heal ourselves and then provide space for those who are wanting to also be initiated I think that we're going to have a society that works where everyone's experience their sexual identity their um, gender identity their you know how they want to experience intimacy with others is going to be honored and respected and have reverence for this beautiful practice which I, from my own experience I think is some of the most powerful healings that can happen because the height of vibration that a sexual healing provides anchors into the system the release and the purification but it also anchors the new you walking out of the temple and that's how ancient civilizations you know even healed the warriors that were coming back from war they would before they went back to their families their home lives their children their wives the warriors would be cleared out of all of the things that they experienced saw did and I think all of us now are modern warriors in that we all work, we all you know, go out and provide for our lives. And as modern warriors, <laughs> do you agree? Um, as modern warriors, we, um, we need to have these temple sessions. So I highly recommend anyone who's out there to find someone who has a temple or a festival that has temples and find people that you resonate with um, and be courageously vulnerable to ask for assistance in your healing process.